So in this video, we're going to look at how we can extract the standard enthalpy change and standard entropy change for a reaction if we know how the equilibrium constant varies as a function of temperature. Okay, so we have some data. Okay, so we've got the log of the equilibrium constant graphed as a function of the reciprocal of the absolute temperature. And that data were fit to a line, and that's given in the uh, caption. So we're going to see if we can somehow use that to calculate delta H and delta S. All right, so rather than just give you the Van Hoff equation, I'm going to rederive it. It's a super quick derivation. It will help you to see where all this comes from. So we start off by saying that delta G is equal to negative RT log of the equilibrium constant. So that's, and keep in mind that's delta G standard. Okay, so once we have that, we can substitute into the right hand side that delta G is equal to delta H standard minus T delta S standard. That's still just negative RT log of K equilibrium. And what we're going to do is divide both sides by negative RT. So we have the log of the equilibrium constant is equal to delta H standard divided by negative RT. So put the negative there, RT. And we're dividing by a negative, so this is going to become positive, And there's a factor of T that's going to cancel. So we're just going to get plus delta S over R. And that's usually written a little bit differently. So I'll write it the way that you're probably going to see it. We just do it this way to emphasize that it's a y equals mx plus b equation for a line. So we have negative delta h standard over r times 1 over t plus delta s standard over r. OK, if you write it like this, you can emphasize that we could call this y. And if we do that, we can call this x. So those are the things we're going to graph. And that's going to leave us with this being the slope, m, and this being our y-intercept, b. So we end up with y equals mx plus b. So this will be a straight line as long as the delta h standard and delta s standard are reasonably constant. And over small temperature uh, changes, even medium temperature changes, they don't change very rapidly. So that's, that's a good approximation. So we can see on the graph over here, we have taken our log of our equilibrium constant and graphed it as y, and our reciprocal absolute temperature and graphed it as x. So the slope of this line has to be equal to this. So we can say, that, first of all, let's, let's find out what the slope of the line is. So let's write down m is equal to uh, 10,620. And we need to write units on that. We can always pull the units from the graph. So since the slope is delta y over delta x, we look at those to get the units. So uh, the log of the equilibrium constant is unitless. And the x-axis is uh, 1 over kelvins. So this is going to be unitless divided by 1 over kelvins, and so that's just going to give us units of kelvins. So you got to be careful when you're doing these because you're going to be having temperatures in kelvins, and you're also using the symbol K for equilibrium constants. So you have to be able to tell from context that this and this is an equilibrium constant, but this is a temperature. OK, now let's look at the slope, or sorry, the, uh, the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is given as 18 from a fit to this data. We need to write down the units on that. Well, the, the y-intercept always has the same units as the y-axis, and that's unitless. So it's just going to be unitless. OK, so now we can use this equation and these numbers to calculate delta S standard and delta H standard. So we have the slope m is equal to delta H standard negative delta H over standard over R. And so don't forget the negative. That's part of the slope. So you've got it included in here. These are going to be opposite in sign. 
So we solve for delta H standard. So we multiply both sides by negative R. And then we just plug in the numbers. So we had 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. We had our slope which was 10,620 kelvins. And, oops, don't forget the negative sign. And that comes up to negative 88,300 joules per mole. I'm just rounding that to three sig figs. So we could say that's a delta H of negative 88.3 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so the units come out to what we're expecting for the heat of a reaction, that it's going to be uh, kilojoules per mole. Okay, now let's do also the um, y-intercept and the delta S. So we've got the y-intercept B is equal to delta H, sorry, delta S over R. So we can say delta S standard is just equal to the y-intercept times the slope. So the y-intercept was 18, and that was unitless. Our 8.314 for our R constant, joules per mole per Kelvin. And we can see that comes out to 150 joules per mole per Kelvin, which are also appropriate units for entropy. So that's how we can extract these constants as long as we have the uh, data showing us how the, the equilibrium constant varies with temperature.